Welcome to the screencast on teaching simulations, the absolute basics, using R. So the goal for today's screencast is to really just describe the basic ways and the basic idea of doing simulations, uh, of doing Monte Carlo simulations in particular, that we will then uh, use in later screencasts and in later lectures for doing statistical inference, i.e. generating Monte Carlo confidence intervals and uh, generating sampling distributions under various null models, uh, as well as for doing simulations for power analyses for complex models, which, which there may be no closed form approach for. And we're using R to do this both because it's quite convenient for these sorts of simulations, uh, indeed it's quite powerful for these sorts of simulations, and of course it has many statistical tools which we can rely on later. So the first place to think is, well, what do I mean by simulate? What, what do I mean by this? All I, all I mean by this is that we're generating some form of random data based on uh, s some knowledge of some kind of distribution. So in, for instance, we'll start with, in, in this tutorial, using a normally distributed variable. So we assume we're sampling, say, from a population that's normally distributed with a particular mean and standard deviation, and we're taking out a fixed number of samples. And each time we do that, we can estimate something like the mean and the variance like we would otherwise. And if we wish, we can repeat that over and over again and use those repeated measures of the means and variances and whatever, slope, intercepts, it doesn't really matter, for making inferences uh, later on. So here's a simple, quick example. We're going to create this variable called norm.simulated. And what we're doing here is we're going to uh, take 100, we're going to extract essentially 100 samples from a distribution, from a population that's a normally distributed population with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 2. We know it's a normal distribution because it's using norm. Our norm means we're generating these random variables, variates from, from this distribution. So we run that line and we can actually look at it. Let's go norm.simulated and indeed we get 100 numbers that are from this distribution with a mean of 5 and standard deviation of 2. Now, of course, none of them are going to be exactly equal to 5 uh, because they're being sampled from this distribution. So we can look at this in a couple of ways. We can plot it. We're going to plot uh, first uh, just the uh, random numbers here. And so the first random number was some fairly low number. It looks like it's pretty close to 1 or so. And then it bounces around. You see it bouncing around. Because each time, it's sampling independently from this distribution. So for each of these 100 numbers, they're independent of all the other draws. So there's no relationship here. So this is, there's no sort of Markov process here. We're not relating. Each sample is completely independent. All right. Then we can look at sort of a histogram of this. And what we'd expect, and indeed what we, we do see, uh, is that this distribution is centered near uh, 5, which we expect is the mean that we simulated from, from this, you know, this hypothetical population had a mean of 5, and we see that the mean of this distribution is close to 5 with a standard deviation. We'll look at that a little bit more closely. We're going to look at the histogram again, just uh, in, in such a way so that we can actually plot it against whatever our theoretical expectations would be. So the, in this bottom plot, um, we've just altered it, so we're looking at the density instead of the frequencies. Um, but otherwise it's going to look identical. Um, but what you see in red is the theoretical distribution for a normal uh, distributed variable with mean of 5 and standard deviation of 2. And you can see that our histogram, we could have done this as a density plot instead, but you see that our histogram uh, overlays our simulated data reasonably nicely, which we would expect. This is simulated from that distribution after all. Okay. So we can look at some summary statistics from the simulation. We'll, so we'll just look at the mean and standard deviation, nothing particularly exciting here. And we get a mean of about 5.02, which is pretty close to 5, and a standard deviation of 1.76, which is not too far from 2. It's certainly not spot on, but not, not too far at all. Okay. So we do this once. Well, let's repeat this experiment over and over again. So we're repeatedly going to go back to that original population and randomly sample 100 individuals. And each of those 100 individuals from that population is an independent draw. So that doesn't, doesn't depend on previous draws or future draws in any way. So we do that just four times. We'll just call it norm.simulated1 through 4. So I'm just going to copy and paste those. And let's look at the histograms for all four of those draws. Now what you see here is that we have these four uh, 
uh, histograms with each of the samples, and they're all centered close to five, which we expect because each of them were drawn from the same distribution with a mean of five and standard deviation of two. But of course, these are different. These are not the same draw. So each time we've drawn these hundred numbers, we've drawn a different hundred numbers, essentially, uh, for, for them. Each of them is an independent draw. Um, and in fact, in this particular case, it would have been equivalent to just draw 400 numbers from this distribution and divide it into four groups of 100. That would not, for this particular instance, have made a difference, or uh, you know, as compared to what we did here, which is draw 100 numbers four times, because they are independent draws from this. Okay, so if we compare the means of each of these things, we expect to, and, and indeed see, that the means are all going to be reasonably close to 5. In this case, they're all slightly lower than 5. Um, but they're all quite close to, close to, but not exactly equal to 5. Great. So this is the basic idea of the simulation. We're just given some ideas of the distribution and some of the properties like mean variance or whatever the parameters are for that distribution. In this case, for normal, it's mean variance, but it could be, say, shape and scale for a gamma distribution uh, or um, uh, uh, size and, and probability for a binomial distribution. Um, we can repeat this process and generate these random samples as if we were going into this you know, hypothetical population and drawing samples, in this case drawing 100 samples at a time. Um, so for each iteration or round of this simulation, we've effectively sampled 100 observations from the population. Right? If we wanted to change the number of observations per iteration, we simply change that lowercase n. So we, instead of making it n equals 100, we could make n equals 1,000 to make as if we're sampling a thousand individuals at a time. If we wanted to say, oh no, we generally, our experiments are very small, we only sample 10 individuals at a time, we could make n equals 10. Similarly, we can change values to the mean or make it to some function like a line. You can change standard deviation, and of course you can change the type of probability distribution you're sampling from as well. Any of these things are possible to, to do these. Um, of course, we don't want to have to write this uh, write this line over and over and over again. If we want to do this more than three or four times, that becomes quite painful. So we want to find an efficient way of performing these different iterations. Um, and there's a number of ways to do that. We'll go through two in this tutorial. One way to do it in R is to use the replicate function, which just repeats the function call n times. Now I want to make a point. There's two, because unfortunately of the naming, there's two lowercase n's here. One is the lowercase n associated with the replicate function. In that case, this is n equals 4. We're going to repeat this four times. And that just refers to how many times to repeat the call to the, fun uh, the function. And the function, in this case, is the R norm function. The n equal 100 is like we saw above. It's basically saying, within the call to the R norm functions, how many samples are being drawn from that population. Um, so despite that being a, a little bit confusing in both having lowercase n, I hope it's clear what those two different n's mean. So we run that line. And if, what we can do is we can immediately look uh, at all four of those together, and I'll bring this over. The naming is not quite as, as nice, but the same basic idea. And again, these four draws are all similar to each other in that they're centered near five, but they're four random draws and are different than the four random draws we saw before. Uh, similarly, we can look at the means and the standard deviations, just like we did before, uh, and apparently gave some error here. Uh, X is missing. With, oh, that's my bad. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, let's just clear that and re rewrite that. I don't know how I had that mistaken. Um, there we go. Uh, so, and again, here, again, we have four, each of the four simulations, they have a mean close to, but not exactly five. Interestingly, I don't know why, but all four of these just also all have a mean that's below five. That's just by random chance. Um, and similarly, the standard deviations are all close to, but not equal to two. Okay, so let's do this again, but uh, repeat the sampling process, the number of iterations, from four times to 2,000 times. And this is the real power of using this, not to do it for four times, but do it for thousands of times. So we can really get a good idea of what the distribution would look like. And so here, the only thing that we've changed is go to n equals 2,000. We do it, it may take uh, a second or two to run, not very long at all. And now we can ask, say, about the spread of the means from our simulated trials. So how much, each time we go through this, we get a thousand or a hundred observations, we calculate the mean, we're going to get 2,000 different means. How much variation is there among those means? So let's calculate that standard deviation among those sampled means. And that standard deviation among sampled means is about 0.2. And that's useful to think about because we can compare this to the expected standard error. 
So if we think about our distribution here uh, that we are sampling from, our distribution had a standard deviation of 2. And every time we sample, we're sampling 100 numbers. Now, if you remember, your standard error of the mean is simply the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Well, that's just going to be 2 divided by the square root of 100, which is not surprisingly about 0.2. It's because that's really approximating the same idea of the sampling uh, of, of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is what we want to get at which is just another, I find, more intuitive way of thinking about what the standard error of the mean is. Um, and we can, we can actually plot this simulated sampling distribution for the means and take a, take a quick look at it. And I want to make it clear that the spread here is going to be much less because we're not looking at the individual observations from each sample, but instead we're calculating for the uh, draw of 100 observations from a sample. We calculate the mean from those 100, and then we repeat that thousands of times, in this case 2,000 times. And so we're looking at the distribution of the sample means. Okay, we can do this same process again, but in this case we can use the for loop, and I just want to make sh sure it's clear because we will go back and forth. Sometimes one is more convenient than the other. Um, and this for loops can definitely be much more efficient uh, computationally uh, uh, in terms of speed in particular, when the number of simulations or the number of parameters being estimated gets very large. Um, so first we have to ask, well, how many iterations of the simulation do we want? We're going to call this big case n here. So we'll just say we'll do it like before. We want n equals 2,000. So we're going to then, after we've done that, we're going to initialize a variable to store the means that we're going to generate. I forgot to write store the, store the means. Um, and we'll just call that simulated means. And we're going to use the repeat function, um, which is just going to repeat NA, uh, which is just an, uh, essentially missing data, and big N times. So that's 2,000. So we're, we should get from running this a vector of length 2,000. And in each element, we're just looking at the first six, there's just missing data. So basically, here's a vector length 2,000, but essentially it has nothing in it yet. We're going to now put stuff in it. And we're going to use the for loop to do this. We're going to repeat this from i equals 1, so we're going to do the first iteration up to i equals n, big N, where that's 2,000. And we'll just, um, <clears throat> excuse me, repeat this all those times. And then we're doing exactly like we did before, before. We simulate the data from that distribution, calculate the means. Uh, this line, just to remove that simulated data, the, the basic point here is we just don't want to leave that sim underscore data um, variable in there after we're finished, so we just remove it each time. You actually don't need to do that. It's just a good clean practice to clean up after yourself. Um, so we just run that. It takes a second. Again, it's very quick. And we can look at the histogram, and essentially we've done exactly the same simulation we've done before, so the distribution should look pretty similar. Again, these are um, random, so it'll be a little bit different. It'll be pretty similar, and we can look at the standard deviation again of this, and it's about 0.2, and this is a standard deviation among those simulated means. So it's going to be close to 0.2, so like our standard error. Okay. Now we can repeat this experiment, uh, this process, with a lower sample size. So let's do it again. For We'll do it 2,000 iterations. But instead of drawing a sample of 100, we're just going to draw a sample of 25 observations each time. So we do that. And I won't worry. I'll let you guys do the histogram yourself. But here, that standard deviation of the of the sample means is about 0.4. So we lowered the sample size and the effect of standard error of the mean, in other words, you know, the amount of sampling variation has increased a lot. How about if we have a much larger sample size? Now in this case we'll have a sample size of 1,000 instead of uh, we started with 100 or did 25 just a moment ago. But same idea. Let's do that. Well, what, what do we expect to happen here? Uh, we do it and, and we run it and we get a much, much smaller standard error, 0.06. So do we see a pattern here? Hopefully you do for these three different ones. For a sample size of 25, relatively modest sample size. Um, oops, it looks like I mixed these numbers up. I apologize. That should be 4 and 5. My apologies. Let's change that and run that again. There we go. Um, so if we look here, which is the lowest sample size, again, our standard, essentially standard of means, about 0.4. Standard error of the mean for a sample size of 100 is about 0.16. And then standard error of the mean for a sample size of 1,000 is 0.06. And this reinforces the basic idea of sample size influencing the estimate of standard error, right? It's this, that's why um, we have the square root of sample size uh, uh, being, 
the, the uh, denominator in the standard error of the mean approximation. Okay, so we've now clear this up. We've now learned about the basics of Monte Carlo methods. We've now generated these Monte Carlo samples, generated some value we're interested in case, even if it's just the mean, and then repeated and, and made some, uh, gotten some sampling distributions, which in the future we can use to make some kind of inferences. Okay, but let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's, let's do this for uh, a, a regression. Um, so we have this regression, which is just y's Again, y is distributed normally where the mean is a plus b times x. In other words, the deterministic part, the mean is the line, the deterministic part of the line, and then the stochastic part, which is our standard deviation. So our intercept will be 5. Uh, our, our slope will be 0.7. We're going to make our x values a sequence of numbers from 2 to 20. We could think about this as some kind of dose-response curve where we're dosing our uh, organisms with uh, different doses of a drug, and y's... Um, say how big they get or some, some uh, how that influences how long it takes for them to develop, something like that. Um, and so what we get with is the, the equation for that line is that deterministic part of our model. And we can plot that. And of course, it's just going to be a perfect fit because there's no variation right now, which is fine. But our response is going to be randomly sampled. It's conditioned on x, but it still needs to be randomly sampled. So we need to incorporate that random variation. So let's say the standard deviation is 2. Don't worry about where that's come from for the moment. We'll talk about for inferentially uh, uh, soon. But for whatever minute, for whatever reason we've expected, it's, it's 2, or I guess 2.5 actually looks like. Um, so we, all we do now is we're going to use our norm just like before. Here, length is x, so we're saying, well, how many, general, one, uh, how many samples do we need to generate for here? Well, we'll just use, uh, we just want as many as we have by, um, observations of x, so we just use length of x here. You could specify exactly what it was, but this is just a more general way to do it. And our mean, all we have to say, because we think about the equation we looked at before, it's just the deterministic part of our model. The y underscore fixed is what we call it, just the a plus b times x, the equation for the line. And then we have our standard deviation. So that's great. So we can run that line. And then we're going to plot the simulated data. And we will actually plot. So here we've got that simulated data. And the black line here is that line that we know. We've known these parameters beforehand because we get to play God here for, for a moment. Um, but we can ask the question, OK, but Maybe if we, you know, one of us gets, you know, if this is two people, one person knows the parameters and the other one just gets this random, random draws and has to estimate them, we can say with this random draw of our new 100 observations that we called y.sim.1, we can ask, let's fit a regression using those new y variables, y, y uh, observations, y.sim.1, as a function of our original x. And we just run the linear model. Um, I won't run through this summary and, and confidence. You can look at that yourself and see how similar they are. I just want to actually plot the line, the best estimated line for those simulated data. And what you should hopefully observe here is, again, it's fitting this red line to these dots here, not to the ones up here, because it has no knowledge of that. It only has knowledge of these y observations down here. And so this red line is the best estimate for those points, which is not too far from our known values, but it's not exact, again, because this is a simulation. And we simulated those y's. Okay, I don't want to go down there. Um, so that's the basic idea, and we can clearly use this um, as uh, an approach. And what I would like you to do uh, as an exercise is write a for loop that will run the same model, the same thing that we just did with this regression, say 200 times, and plot the lines from each of the simulations uh, onto the same plot. Uh, you don't actually need to plot the simulated data points, just the, the actual lines. Um, in fact, the easiest way of doing this is to, and I'll, when you're using the plot function, use type equal, equals n, and it suppresses the plot of, of the points. Uh, and I'll post the answers for this on Monday night. Uh, thank you, and this ends the uh, screencast for the basics of teaching simulations in R.